Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I'm going to take a look at uh, what I class as my top 10 um, flea market finds of 2019. And yes, there are more than 10 items here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, grouping them together. Some of them are going to be grouped together. So uh, they are going to be just, just the one tool sort of thing. Let's get into it and take a look. At number 10, uh, this is a uh, hybrid pipe wrench. Um, it's a, a, an old British company, Harrington, 18 inch. Um, but what's, what's happened is somebody in the past has lost the uh, dynamic jaw just here and they've um, popped on this record 18 inch jaw to keep the thing going, which I thought was quite nice. Uh, if I remember rightly, it cost me one pound. Uh, this was originally a Harrington the Blackbird, 18 inch, um, should be, uh, well when I get a moment I'll try and clean it up, but uh, yeah, so that's my number 10. Number 9 is this unusual pipe wrench right here, um, can't remember who made it, uh, it's got a serial number here, or at least a patent number just there, it's a 19 inch um, length pipe wrench, quite an interesting design. Uh, you can't really take it apart that I can see anyway, but uh, yeah, so it's um, it does work uh, So there we go very interesting. I like that one glad I picked that one up that came from my uh, favorite stall At number eight I'm grouping them together here, but uh, at number eight is my collection of uh, clones and copies and fakes of the good old footprint wrench this one here is a spectacular, uh, this is an apprentice piece, very nice indeed. Uh, this particular one was made in Poland. This thing here comes from um, Czechoslovakia, so it's obviously sometime before 1993. This thing, I believe is, uh, I don't know what the make is, Beza. So that, that might be the make, Beza. And I think it's got um, 1938 stamped on the other side of the hook. So that's an interesting one. Um, some of the other um, fakes I've got are uh, really nasty, but these are the pick of the bunch. At number seven, pliers. How can you not pick up a nice pair of pliers at the flea market? Uh, these ones are uh, quite a vintage to them. I'm not sure how old they are yet. Um, they are marked as foreign and they've got something stamped onto the uh, jaws just here. I'm not sure what that is yet, but they will clean it very nicely. I think they'll uh, get a nice shine to them, will these? Um, these ones here I bought a couple of months ago. The handles were sticking out the box like so. I thought, yeah, they look nice. So I um, grabbed them. They cost me a pound. They were a little bit seized up. As you can see, I've, um, I've actually got a video of the renovation of these little fellows. They've come up really nice, uh, and the handles are very comfortable to grip too. So yeah, you can't go wrong buying a nice pair of pliers at the flea market. At number six, hopefully, if I've counted right, we have uh, this really old uh, and large adjustable spanner. I think this comes from uh, around about the sort of mid 1800s to the late 1800s sometimes. Um, you would not believe how much I paid for this. One pound guys, just one pound. I was gobsmacked. I thought it was going to be a lot more than that. I didn't think I was going to be able to afford it. Um, along with this, I got this equally huge spanner also for a pound from one stall, from both from the same stall. It's amazing. Look at it. I can tell you I was really pleased to get this one for a quid. Not bad at all. At number five, a favourite of mine, the footprint wrench. <clears throat> these are all uh, different sizes as you can see. Uh, these two here, you have to take out the pin to adjust it with the holes as you can see. But this one here is what they call the quick adjust system. Open the jaws, push the button, slide it to the position you want, and we're there, really quick. Um, when I picked this one out of the box, I was hoping it was going to be a domino version, but it's not, it's the actual footprint version. Um, they did actually make a domino version, and I'm hoping to get hold of one of those. The footprint wrench, a very big favourite of mine, and still being made in the UK too. At number five, another interesting vintage adjustable here, the nice curved handle. I picked this one up from the last boot sale of 2019. 
very interesting spanner. I like that one a lot actually. Um, I got this as a, with a, quite a few other bits and pieces for six pounds. So yeah, a nice find there too. Okay, so I may have lost count somewhere during the making of this video, but um, this is uh, whatever number this has got to. And these little fellows are by. Um, these are Gerda. This is a Gerda miner. Uh, Joseph Lucas Limited of England. Um, both, both of these cost me a pound. This one's um, marked as a war finish, so it's hardly got any stampings on it apart from the number 91 on it, I believe. It's got war finish over the other side. But this one's uh, particularly interesting because it has the little built in pipe wrench jaw. This is quite interesting because you can fold it out the way and use it as an ordinary spanner, or you can bring this in and um, use it as a pipe wrench apparently. So there's another two very interesting spanners right there. Another favourite of mine is the King Dick spanner. These two are of great interest because they both of them have the uh, early markings on them. This one here just has a, a trademark and the little bulldog on there. Uh, and this one has the uh, the bulldog by itself. So um, one of these is older than the other one. I think this is the older one. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I can't remember exactly when they were made, but I'll put it up at the bottom of the screen down here so we can have a look which is which. Move them apart like that there. We can see which is the older one. I think this one was from 19, uh, 1885 onwards. I think the uh, bulldog by itself was 1885 up to whatever date and um, yeah well I'll put it at the bottom of the screen guys but yeah that's another two favourite of mine anyway and at number one Barco 113 made in Sweden flip him over um, AB they got BA Horth and Co Stockholm uh, what size is this wrench here can't remember what size it is but anyway um, I couldn't find anything about this little fellow online whatsoever. There was uh, just one page from a catalogue which has a slightly different design just here. So what I did was I wrote directly to Barco uh, and within a few days I got a reply back to say that this is actually a collector's item. Um, I think the dates, I'll have to have a look at the email again but uh, what I'll do is I'll put down the bottom here Although he didn't actually finish the dates off properly for me, so I can only guess at where, when they were when they were built to and from. But um, yeah, uh, a very interesting find. This actually cost me ten pounds, which I was quite happy to pay. But as I say, you know, if you try and uh, if you try and search this one out, you won't find it at all. I couldn't find much about it. So yeah, got myself a collector's item at number one then. Okay, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my. Uh, top 10 uh, flea market tools of 2019. Now obviously I bought many many more tools uh, during the year than the lot you've seen here but then that would probably be like a top 200 and would probably go on for about four hours and I think uh, some of you might get a little bit bored or even fall asleep during that one but uh, yeah so I um, hope you enjoyed uh, taking a look at my uh, top 10. Um, please let me know which is your favourite of the bunch. Um, maybe oh, well, I, I do like um, uh, vintage British tools, they're my favourites. Um, anything made in Britain, yes, definitely a favourite of mine. Got some interesting tools here as well. Okay then guys, well uh, thanks for popping over. I do hope you all have a very Merry Christmas uh, and I hope you'll pop by again very soon because I'm sure I'll have something else of interest for you to take a look at. And um, Merry Christmas everyone and I'll catch you later. <coughs>